through this little booklet on 20 revelations that will change your life. And this is our 55th year anniversary of when the Lord changed my life, March the 23rd, 1968. And I've just gone back and written down 20 of the most important revelations that God has given me. And so there's 20 revelations, and this is just a really brief introduction to it. At the end of every chapter, at the end of every one of these revelations, we have additional teaching where I go into depth on this. But this is a freebie, and it's just a brief introduction. We encourage you to get the other complimentary teachings that go along with it. And this week, what I'm going to be talking about, or today, and it'll go into next week, I'm going to be talking about the power of faith-filled words. And I have CDs and DVDs on this, and I have a DVD that was taken from our television programs on this, and we're offering that in addition to this little booklet. This booklet is a free gift to you, no charge whatsoever. We do ask for some type of a gift for the other materials. We'll be putting out tens of thousands of these, and we need people to support and do what you can. So yesterday, actually for the last three days, I was teaching on Revelation number 16, which is the authority of the believer, and that led me into talking about Mark chapter 11, verse uh, 23, verses 14 through 23, is where Jesus cursed this fig tree by just speaking to it. And then he said in Mark 11, 23, for verily I say unto you that whosoever will say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. And I was focusing yesterday primarily on the part where he told us to speak to the mountain, not speak to God about our mountain or about our problem, but speak directly to the problem. And involved in that, for you to just, instead of going to God and saying, Oh, God, help God do something, for you to speak and command that mountain to get out of your way implies that you understand God has given you His power and authority. So that's what I spoke on the first three days was about the authority, and I use that. But I want to turn back over to that, Mark chapter 11, verse 23, and just highlight some other things that are really powerful. And that's talking about the emphasis on words. And this is what this 17th revelation that God has given me is all about, that faith is voice activated. You can see that in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, because the Lord said, Whosoever will say unto the mountain. Notice, He said, first of all, Who, Verily I say unto you, that's one time, then whosoever will say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That's four times in this one verse that Jesus talked about the power of words. If you go back to Mark chapter 11 and verse 14, where he spoke to this fig tree and said, No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. He didn't do anything physical to this fig tree. He didn't cut it down. He didn't pour salt on it. He didn't pull it out of the ground. He didn't uproot. He didn't do anything. He spoke to it. The power that is in words is amazing. And if you are going to use your authority, this is one of the greatest ways. I'd say the two greatest ways to release your authority as a believer are words and actions. In uh, James chapter 2, verse 20, it says, Faith without works is dead. So for you to sit here and say, Oh, I'm believing for this, but you aren't acting consistent with what you're believing for. Like say, for instance, you're believing that you're healed, and yet you're going to lay in bed and you're afraid to do anything. You might aggravate and stuff. You got to start acting like you're healed. If you're believing for prosperity, you got to start thinking big and acting and planning and doing things that are consistent with what you say. And then also you have to start using words. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Man, that's one powerful verse. Death and life. It didn't say just life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life. And without people realizing it, they are speaking forth 
WHAT'S IN THE ABUNDANCE OF THEIR HEART. MATTHEW CHAPTER 12 SAYS, OUT OF THE ABUNDANCE OF THE HEART, THE MOUTH SPEAKS. AND YOU CAN TELL WHAT A PERSON'S REALLY BELIEVING BY WHAT THEY'RE SAYING. THEY MAY SIT THERE AND SAY, WELL, I BELIEVE I'M HEALED. BUT IF YOU'LL LISTEN TO THEM, ARE THEY GOING TO TALK LIKE THEY'RE HEALED? ARE THEY GOING TO START ACTING LIKE THEY'RE HEALED? IF THEY DON'T REALLY BELIEVE IN THEIR HEART, IT WILL EVENTUALLY COME OUT THEIR MOUTH. YOU WILL SPEAK OUT OF THE ABUNDANCE OF YOUR HEART. AND SO, YOU KNOW, YOU SIT THERE AND YOU COME FOR PRAYER. YOU LET ME OR SOMEBODY ELSE PRAY FOR YOU. AND THEN YOU LEAVE AND SOMEBODY SAYS, HOW ARE YOU? AND YOU JUST, IN A SENSE, LIKE SPIRITUALLY, YOU JUST THROW UP ALL OVER THEM AND START SAYING, OH, MAN, I HEARD IT EVERY PART OF MY BODY. THE DOCTOR SAYS THIS. I'M GOING TO DIE. I KNOW SO-AND-SO HAD THE SAME THING. THEY DIED FROM IT. AND YOU JUST START SPEAKING ALL OF THIS UNBELIEF. IT DIDN'T JUST SAY THAT LIFE IS IN THE POWER OF THE TONGUE. LIFE AND DEATH ARE IN THE POWER OF THE TONGUE. AND MANY PEOPLE ARE HUNG BY THEIR OWN TONGUE BECAUSE THEY JUST ARE SPEWING FORTH EVERY PAIN, EVERY PROBLEM, EVERY POVERTY, EVERY every DOUBT, EVERY NEGATIVE THING THAT THEY THINK. WORDS ARE IMPORTANT. AND THIS IS WHAT JESUS IS SAYING. WHOSOEVER WILL SAY UNTO THE MOUNTAIN. YOU'VE GOT TO USE WORDS. FAITH IS VOICE ACTIVATED. THAT IS REALLY IMPORTANT TO ME. AND I HAVEN'T GOT TIME TO GO INTO THE WHOLE THING. IF YOU'LL GET THIS SERIES, it'll, IT'LL GO BACK INTO THESE THINGS. BUT IN GENESIS CHAPTER 1, GOD SAID, LET US MAKE MAN IN OUR IMAGE. GOD SAID, LET US BRING FORTH, YOU KNOW, OUT OF THE GROUND, THE ANIMALS. LET THE SEA BRING FORTH ALL THE LIVING CREATURES. LET THE GROUND BRING FORTH THE TREES AND THE PLANTS, THE GRASS AND ALL OF THESE THINGS. HE SPOKE EVERYTHING INTO EXISTENCE. HEBREWS CHAPTER 11, VERSE 3 SAYS, BY FAITH WE UNDERSTAND THAT THE WORLDS WERE FRAMED BY THE WORD OF GOD. THE WORD FRAMED THERE LITERALLY MEANS THEY WERE BUILT, THEY WERE BROUGHT INTO A REALITY BY THE WORD OF GOD SO THAT THINGS WHICH ARE SEEN WERE NOT MADE OF THINGS WHICH DO APPEAR. GOD SPOKE EVERYTHING INTO EXISTENCE. SO FAITH, WORDS, IS THE CREATIVE FORCE. IT'S THE PARENT FORCE. AND EVERYTHING THAT WORDS CREATED WILL RESPOND TO WORDS. I KNOW THAT THIS IS ODD TO MOST PEOPLE. THIS IS NOT THE WAY I WAS BROUGHT UP. IT'S NOT THE WAY THAT MOST OF US WERE BROUGHT UP. MOST OF US, YOU KNOW, WILL SAY NEARLY ANYTHING. THERE'S PEOPLE THAT'LL SAY ALL KINDS OF STUFF. THEY'LL SAY, I'LL BE THERE AT 7 O'CLOCK, AND THEY MAY NOT EVEN LEAVE HOME UNTIL 7 O'CLOCK AND GET TO WHERE THEY'RE GOING UNTIL 7.15 OR 7.30. AND WORDS JUST DON'T MEAN A LOT TO A LOT OF PEOPLE. WE, EVEN IN CONTRACTS, YOU CAN BREAK A CONTRACT IF YOU GET A GOOD LAWYER. YOU KNOW, BILL CLINTON, uh, THEY ASKED, DID YOU HAVE SEX WITH THAT WOMAN? AND HE... HE SAID NO. AND THEN LATER WHEN HE WAS GRILLED, HE SAYS, WELL, IT DEPENDS ON WHAT THE DEFINITION OF IS IS. AND HE TRIED TO WIGGLE HIS WAY OUT OF ALL OF THESE KIND OF THINGS. AND THERE'S SOME PEOPLE THAT THEY JUST, THEY WILL LIE WITHOUT ANY SEEMING uh, CONVICTION WHATSOEVER. WORDS DON'T MEAN MUCH TO PEOPLE, BUT IT MEANT SOMETHING TO JESUS. THESE DISCIPLES WERE SAYING, HOW DID THIS HAPPEN TO THIS FIG TREE? HE SAYS, BECAUSE I SAID UNTO THIS FIG TREE. AND THEN HE SAYS, IF YOU WILL SAY, AND DOUBT NOT IN YOUR HEART, BUT BELIEVE THAT WHAT YOU SAY COMES TO PASS, YOU WILL HAVE WHATSOEVER YOU SAY. HE'S PUTTING THE EMPHASIS ON WORDS. WORDS ARE IMPORTANT. AND IF YOU DON'T BELIEVE, NOTICE IT SAYS, YOU HAVE TO BELIEVE THAT THOSE THINGS YOU SAY WILL COME TO PASS. AND YET MOST OF US SAY THINGS ALL THE TIME. AND, it, and WE DON'T GO BY, WE AREN'T BOUND BY OUR WORDS, BUT GOD HAS BOUND HIMSELF BY HIS WORD. GOD CANNOT LIE. GOD NEVER SAYS ONE THING AND THEN CHANGES HIS MIND AND DOES SOMETHING ELSE. HE NEVER SAYS, WHOOPS, SORRY, I, YOU KNOW, I SAID THIS, BUT I'M NOT GOING TO DO IT. HEBREWS CHAPTER 1, VERSE 3 SAYS, HE UPHOLDS ALL THINGS BY THE WORD OF HIS POWER. IF GOD WAS TO EVER LIE, EVERYTHING THAT WAS CREATED BY WORDS WOULD BE DESTROYED. THIS WHOLE UNIVERSE, YOU AND I, WOULD DISAPPEAR. GOD'S WORDS ARE POWERFUL. AND THE REASON HE WAS ABLE TO JUST SPEAK TO A FIG TREE, HE DIDN'T TOUCH IT, HE DIDN'T DO ANYTHING IN THE PHYSICAL, AND YET THAT FIG TREE OBEYED HIM. IN 24 HOURS, IT WAS DEAD, WAS BECAUSE HE BELIEVED THAT THE WORDS HE SAID WOULD COME TO PASS. 
Do you believe that your words will come to pass? I'm telling you, you can't do this and say, all right, when it comes to healing, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. But then over here in the rest of your life, you just violate your words all of the time. You know, it says, and I think it's Psalms 15, 4, it says, a godly man will swear to his own hurt and change not. If you are godly, if you're like God is what that means, you will say something and you are bound by your words. Even if it's something that's going to wind up hurting you, you will not break your word. 